Welcome back to the next part of that series on stress. Now that you've identified micro stresses, what can you do to handle micro stresses in your life? Traditional advice on coping with negative or stressful interactions doesn't always work because micro stresses are deeply and invisibly embedded in our lives. They are coming at us through relationships and interactions that are too numerous and high velocity to easily shake off. Consider even just one micro stress in your day, perhaps the frustration of a colleague missing the mark on a joint project, or the emotional toll of a trusted work colleague moving on, and try explaining it to someone close to you. If you pay attention, by the time you start explaining and by the time you're done, 30 minutes would most likely have passed. And so if you were going to explain each relationship that triggers stress for you, if you are going to explain them one after the other, you are going to spend a lot of minutes doing that. So in fact, just before I started this recording, my wife came to me and told me of some of the things that was going on and of course, I had to stop everything I was doing in order to pay attention and do the recording. And in fact, as I was just recording just now, if you heard there was a door shut, <laughs> do you know what that means? that probably may be another conversation that may last for the next 20 or 30 minutes and so you find that sometimes by the time you are beginning to spend time spend time spend time spend time explaining each micro stress to the person who decides to listen to you it may have gone a different way and you may not necessarily like that right in fact sometimes a precious hour later you might feel better after having that conversation but you find that you don't have that luxury of time to be doing all of that explanation and that is even if you don't consider the person who is on the receiving end of your venting of your ranting so you find that micro stressors pose a little different dilemma than what we have seen before so we need new tools for mitigating them we need new tools for handling relationships that cause stress in our lives so here are three ways you can handle that number one isolate and act on two to three micro stressors if you follow the exercise i gave earlier on you will be able to locate two to three micro stressors that have a persistent impact on your life particularly you'll be able to identify the relationship that seem to trigger this stress in your everyday life now, some things that you may consider to be normal in our lives can have significant impact. In fact, micro stressors create emotional build-up such that needs to be released before you can think now rationally about a constructive response. So the first step is to decompress, hit the pause button, close the laptop, undertake an activity that is self-affirming and that absorbs you so the nonsense of all the things that bothers you can melt away. What does that mean? Take a break. When you narrow the list of micro stressors you're focusing on to just two or three, it's easier to find time and energy to vent and if that's helpful to you anyway. Our stressors can often look different after we've had a chance to distance ourselves from the noise of anxiety or our tendency to want to be defensive. So again, rather than push back, rather than get into an awkward conversation, what you want to do is what? You want to break it down you want to pause and then buffer so that you can isolate and act on two to three micro stressors that are persistent second invest in relationship and activities that keep the less consequential micro stresses in perspective what does that mean it means Get into relationships or activities such as meditation, gratitude journaling that can help you maintain physical health through exercise, proper nutrition, good health, sleep habits, particularly some of the things that you can do every single day that can help you to combat stress. But of course, there are also important relational solutions, people who have greater dimensionality in their lives and broader connections, that is, they don't tend to experience these micro stresses in the same way you experience them. They can help keep you in perspective. Now, when we talk to people who tell a positive life story, they often have cultivated and maintained authentic connections that come from many walks of life. Interactions in these kind of relationships tend to broaden your identity, tend to open your mind up 
and how especially on how you look at your own life so the key here is to get into conversations with relationships that don't trigger stress that don't trigger these micro stresses in you and get into activities that help you to combat and to relieve stress if you check the card or the description right now you'll find an episode that i produced earlier on about how to relieve stress and anxiety and that should be something you should take a listen to if you want to walk through that next step is for you to distance or disconnect from stress creating people or activities now i'm going to put a caveat here a lot of people tell you that if that person is not working if this thing is making you feel somehow cut it off that is not exactly what i am saying i'm not saying cut off i'm saying distance or disconnect from stress creating relationships or activities now you know is something here earlier on i said invest in relationships and activities right but this time around i'm saying that disconnect or distance yourself from relationships or activities that tend to trigger this stress in you now here's what you need to understand over time it's not always easy to detect when a friend or colleague is routinely causing you stress rather than lifting you up but that's what makes it all the more invisible because we can become intertwined both personally and professionally with people who routinely leave us feeling emotionally depleted, emotionally drained, emotionally sobbed that we feel like our energy is gone. So take a step back. Using the same assessment I gave you just now, take a step back and evaluate the relationships in your life over which you have control and make an effort to create some distance in the ones that create more stress than joy. You are not cutting off again. You are simply just distancing yourself. Sometimes it's very okay to actually distance yourself from people. Now, to be clear, stress creating relationships are not just negative or toxic ones. They can be people that we enjoy spending time with, but they enable unproductive behaviors or they routinely leave us stranded because they haven't come true on what they promise. So you don't have to disconnect from the people you enjoy being around, but you have to recognize the effect on your mental and physical well-being and try to put some boundaries around those relationships. Now, I'm sure that this must have been helpful to you. This must have provided you some insights and some steps that you can take. And I look forward to hearing from you. Perhaps you are going to share with me in the comments right now. Again, I'm going to say this, you don't have to accept micro stresses as your destiny. Stress patterns are often predictable. Many times we don't pay attention to those predictions. And if you seem that if you can see them for what they are, that they are patterns they build up in from our network, from our mindset, from the responses we give, from the way we live our lives. As someone once said, I'm just going to lay down some new rules that may upset the cat at first, but in the long run are going to make me a better contributor because I won't feel frazzled all the time. You want to also do that in your own life. Once you learn to recognize the patterns of micro stressors in your own life, you too will be able to put the proper conditions in place to mitigate them. I am Dio Samuel once again, and I hope that this particular episode has been very, very helpful to you. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode and of course if you would like to have some personal hand holding help i'll be glad to have you you can check the link in the description of this episode for a way to book a 30 minutes discovery call with me it's completely free so you're not paying anything but of course it also helps me to identify exactly what's going on with you and to see how i can be of help to you my name again is Dyer Samuel for the last time, <laughs> and I'm going to see you in the next episode.